My name is Scott Davis, and I'll be continuing to talk on some research I've been doing for the past year on water transport in trees. So just a quick review of what I've talked about before. Um, we're researching water transport in tall trees, specifically sequoias. Um, and we're trying to figure out how they pull water all the way up to the top. They do something we can't do. They draw a water column over 100 meters, and they don't use any extra energy. They just use the energy that's in the atmosphere. We talked about some of the theories behind how that works, and most of those theories don't actually cover all of the water transport. So if you leave out the cohesion tension theory, we can only draw water up about 10 meters. So we're going to talk a little more later about the cohesion tension theory, but the general idea behind it is just that evaporation creates suction at the top. So you can imagine the tree is a tall straw, and evaporation is the suction that's pulling the water to the top. The problem with that is in the real world, if we try to create suction at the top of a straw, we're using some kind of a pump and we're manipulating the pressure at the top. So we're decreasing, we're creating vacuum at the top, and we're using atmospheric pressure at the bottom to drive the flow. That limits us to 34 feet. We want to break that limit, and we need tension in water to do that. And that's difficult to do. Uh, so where we left things is we want to break that limit, and we're trying to figure out how the tree does that by mimicking the structure of itself. We're using basically tiny polymer molds. Uh, we're making little bitty tree cells out of a transparent polymer. And we're observing what happens whenever you actually create evaporation at the end of that chain. So we're trying to figure out what's going on in the tree when we want to apply that to the real world. Today we're going to talk about some of those applications, uh, a little more detail on the cohesion tension theory, and the issues that we're going to come in contact with whenever we're actually we're sustaining tension in water, it causes some problems, and then we're going to talk about our timeline and our plan for addressing those problems. So right now, uh, the application that we're going after is geothermal heating and cooling. So everywhere in the world, you can go down a certain depth and find a constant temperature. So you can see this graph on the top left, that's five centimeters depth. You have a variation, you can't really see the numbers here, but you can see that there's pretty significant variation in temperature throughout the year. 35 degrees Celsius at their test site. You go down 1.6 meters, that's this bottom right one, and you've only got a variation of about 12 degrees Celsius. And if you go down deep enough, you're going to get a constant temperature throughout the year. Uh, so that's a free energy source. We can heat in the summer and we can cool in the winter. So we want to take advantage of that if we can. And we actually do that right now. Um, the difference is we actually pump that water. So we pump water through that underground reservoir and up into a hole or a building of some sort. It gives off its heat in the winter, and it goes back down and gets more heat from the ground. It continues that cycle. In the summer, it's the opposite. The ground is cooler and the atmosphere is hotter. Um, the problem with that is that pumps are inefficient. So we're spending a lot of energy to do that. We want to get rid of that energy cost. So our goal is to heat and cool tall structures up to 120 meters tall. I, was, I meant to reference it in the last slide. I had a picture of the state capitol. That's about the height of what we should be able to heat and cool without spending the energy. I don't know if y'all have seen the state capital building up close in person, but it's a pretty big building. Uh, so we want to do that without using pumps. How are we going to do that? In a tree, the evaporation from the top creates suction. That happens in that naturally at atmospheric temperatures. And we can actually, since our system is going to be closed, we can manipulate saturation temperature and have evaporation at different temperatures. So we're going to do the same thing in our model. We're going to use evaporation to create our suction. There are two things that allow that to create negative pressure. So the surface tension of water, if you drop a little water droplet on the surface, it's going to create a bead. And that's due to surface tension, like if there's an insect walking across the surface of water, that's surface tension. And if you're pulling water out of a very small pore, like what's at the top of the tree, you're creating a lot of negative pressure. If you have a large pour, think about a pond like in the picture, you're not creating negative pressure at the bottom of the pond when the water evaporates off the top. So it's surface tension and then cohesion. The water molecules tend to stick together. Uh, it's due to hydrogen bonding, and those bonds are very strong. There's one near perfect experiment where we're actually able to sustain negative 30 megapascals of pressure. Uh, not we, someone else uh, was able to sustain that, and that's 4,300 psi. I don't know if y'all realize how much that is, but that's enough pressure to drive water to the top of a 10,000 foot tall building. So we have more than enough pressure to work with if we can actually get it to sustain that tension. So water can sustain that much tension. Um, the issue with that 
real world, I don't know if y'all are familiar with this, but if you put water in tension, if there's any little bubble, any imperfection, that bubble is going to start to grow. That tension is going to pull that bubble apart. It's going to grow and break the water column. So that's a difficult problem to overcome in the real world. That's why that last experiment I said near perfect. There were no bubbles. The problem with trees is there are bubbles. We know they're there. We know there are imperfections. So cavitation, the growth of those bubbles and then breaking the water column, does take place. All the tree does is it controls that cavitation. So we're trying to figure out how the tree does that. That's what we're after. And we think we've made some good progress to figure out how the tree does that. Um, we're going to continue using our experiment, experimental results and we want to build a scale model of this next year. Um, so what's this matter right now? Um, we're trying to set this up as a senior design project for next year. So it's going to be a mechanical and biological interdisciplinary project. Um, we're writing grant proposals for NASA, DOE, and NSF so that we can build that larger model. We need help in the lab now, um, and we need project team members for next semester. So if anybody's interested, just let me know. Um, otherwise, does anybody have any questions? Nope. That's it.